Dear students, I am Dr. Sangeeta Pandey. Today I will be talking about the egg. Hope you will learn the facts about the egg and use the knowledge in practical life. Why egg is so important? Egg is important for its nutritional and functional qualities. Nutritional quality enhances the nutrient content of the food whereas functional quality enhances taste and texture of the food. After going through this module, you will be able to learn about the structure of egg, gain the knowledge about the nutritive value of the egg and also understand the grading and quality of the egg. Now what is an egg? We consume egg every day but do we know how it is formed? Eggs formation begin in the ovaries of hen with growth of a yolk where germ cell is located. Bird eggs consists of a shielding shell, egg white, yolk surrounded within various thin membranes. Usually chicken as well as duck eggs are selected for the consumption. Egg is an excellent food with the highest biological value protein as it is produced for the nourishment of the embryo. The proteins of egg exhibit exceptionally high nutritive and functional properties. The United States Department of Agriculture has classified eggs under flesh foods due to their high biological protein content. Now let us learn about the structure of an egg. The average chicken egg weighs about 50 to 60 gram. Major percentage of the components in a standard egg are as follows. Shell comprised of 9.5%, white comprised of 58%, whereas yolk comprised of 29%. So now I will explain the structure of egg as you can see in the picture. The outer covering of the egg is called as shell. Then there is a shell membrane. On top you can see the air cell which increases with the loss of moisture. Inside shell egg white is present which is formed of three layers divided as thick and thin layer. The thick layer are outer layer of egg white and the white which surrounds the yolk. In between these two layers of thick white, you can see a layer of thin white. And in the center, it is yolk consisting of germinal disc. The membrane which separates yolk and albumin is called as vitelline membrane. You can also see a rope-like structure holding the yolk in the center of an egg. This structure is called as calizer. So now you know how the egg structure is. Next we will look into the detail about the components. Now first we will understand about the outer covering of the egg called as shell. The porous shell structure is primarily calcium carbonate and is brittle in nature. The shell encloses two semi-permeable shell membranes. The two large membranes are separated at bigger end by the air cell formed when egg content shrink on cooling after being laid. The conditions of the shell and membranes influence loss of moisture, shell breaking strength and susceptibility to microbial invasion. Egg shell color is due to pigment accumulation during egg formation and can differ according to species and breed of the bird. The color of the egg can vary from white to brown. Now the second component is air cell. As you have seen in the picture, the bigger end of the egg has air cell which forms when the material inside the egg cools down and shrink after it is laid. 
Evaluation of egg are done according to the size of the air cell present in it. A freshly laid egg contain a small air cell. As the air cell becomes bigger, the characteristic of the eggs in terms of quality deteriorates. Size of the air cell becomes important testing method for the freshness of an egg. This we will see later in this module. So now we will move to egg white. Albumin or white is commonly used for the clear aqueous material with greenish yellow cast caused by the pigment ovoflavin. The inner thin white envelops egg yolk and forms twisted cord like structure which holds the egg yolk in the position is called as chalizer. The function of albumin is to guard the yolk and gives nutrition to the embryo for the growth. Now next is egg yolk. The yolk is biologically living center of the egg. The yellow yolk is separated from the white by yolk sac or vitelline membrane. The germinal disc is placed at the uppermost surface of the tube shaped latibra located at one end of the yolk. The yolk of the freshly laid egg is protruding and well defined round with the firmness. As the egg starts aging, yolk starts absorbing water from the albumin, which causes increase in the size and stretches. Hence, deteriorate the vitelline membrane. So, the result is a flattened and the spread yolk. Color of yolk is determined by feed of the bird and if the feed comprises of yellow or orange pigments called xanthophylls, then it gets stored in the yolk giving the color. Lutein is the major pigment present in egg yolk. For example, yolk color can get richer if the feed incorporates yellow corn and a yellow flower. To get the better picture, we will look into the composition of the egg. The egg contents comprises of approximately 65% of white and 35% of yolk. The chief component of the eggs are protein and lipids. It is major source of following nutrients. 7 gram protein, 4 gram from white and 3 gram from yolk, 5 gram fat which comprises of triglycerides, cholesterol and phospholipids, 47 percent monounsaturated fatty acids, 37 percent saturated fatty acids and 16 percent polyunsaturated fatty acid. 213 milligram of cholesterol is present in one egg which is quite high. It is a good source of fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E and K which is present in the yolk. It is also a good source of B vitamins. If we look into mineral content, it is 0.8 percent in white compared to 2.0 percent in yolk. So not more than 4 egg yolks per week should be consumed. The composition of egg white and yolk differ drastically. If you compare between egg yolk and egg white, you can clearly see from the figure that protein in egg white is 11 percent as compared to yolk which is 17.5 percent. Presence of fat is only 0.2 percent in white whereas 35.2 percent in yolk which is quite high. Egg white is 88 percent of water and yolk is only 48 percent of water. 
So the main nutrient present in egg is protein. Let's start with protein in egg white. The egg white is constituted of thin and thick portions. Total thin white is in fresh egg is approximately 25%. Egg whites are mainly constituted of water with no fat or carbohydrate but comprise of protein in 8 to 12 percentage. Egg whites are mainly constituted of water with no fat or carbohydrate but protein is 8 to 12 percent which can be seen in the given table. You can see in the table various percentage of protein present in egg white. Oval albumin 55 percent which denatures easily. Corn albumin 13 percent which easily gets coagulated and binds metallic iron such as iron, copper, aluminium, zinc and forms heat stable complex. Ovomucoid 10 percent, it is glycoprotein and resistant to denaturation in acid but denatures in alkali media. It inhibits enzyme specifically trypsin. Ovomucin 2 percent is responsible for jelly like character and thickness of white. It is insoluble in water but soluble in a dilute salt solution. Evidin present in 0.05 percent. It binds biotin and makes this vitamin unavailable. It gets denatured by heat. Lysozyme 3.5 percent. This enzyme is capable of dissolving cell wall of bacteria and is heat sensitive. Flavoprotein 0.8 percent, it binds riboflavin. Now we will see protein present in egg yolk. It contains 25 to 33 percent of fat and 15 to 17 percent of protein. The remaining part is water. Major protein in egg yolk are lipoproteins which has excellent emulsifying properties. Lipoproteins are of two types, lipovitalins and lipovitalinin. Lipovitalins are high density lipoprotein comprising of 16 to 18 percent of egg yolk solid. Phosphatin contains 5 to 6 percent of yolk solid. This part is rich in phosphorus and accounts for 80 percent of the protein phosphorus of yolk. It binds fake iron and forms a soluble complex and thus the iron carrier of the yolk. Levitin comprises of 4 to 10 percent of yolk solid. This is water soluble protein and is also rich in sulphur. Now in lifestyle diseases yolk consumption is not recommended. What is the reason? You know because yolk is rich in fat especially in cholesterol. Egg yolk contains lipoprotein, phospholipids and triglycerides. Lipoproteins are complexed with phospholipids and cholesterol. The main phospholipid is lecithin in the egg. Major fatty acid in the triglycerides are oleic, palmitic, linoleic and stearic acid. Presence of highly unsaturated fatty acid in yolk makes it vulnerable for easy oxidation and developing of flavor. Egg is good source of cholesterol and lecithin that are vital to the structure and function of all cells in the body. However, these are not essential nutrients as our bodies synthesize them. Cholesterol is useful for maintaining flexibility and permeability of cell membranes 
and maintain skin supple by providing fatty lubricants. Cholesterol is also needed for the synthesis of vitamin D, cortisol, sex hormones and bile salts. So now we will look into the nutritive value of egg. Egg is a source of all essential amino acids needed for the human to support the growth. It provides energy and the calorie content of medium size egg is 66 calories. Only 3% of energy requirement is fulfilled for an adult with the consumption of an egg per day. Eggs are valuable part of healthy diet because it contains essential amino acids, good amount of minerals, vitamins and fairly low amount of saturated fats. Eggs contain high biological value protein. On the standard scale, if protein content is assessed, protein of the egg has the maximum point. So, it can be used as the gold standard against other protein rich sources. Out of whole egg edible portion, 12.6% of the egg weight is protein, which includes yolk as well as albumin. There is more protein in the albumin as compared to the yolk. Protein in the egg is a good source of essential amino acid called as leucine and this plays significant role in controlling the use of glucose by skeletal muscle and helps in fast recovery after exercise. Hence, it can be recommended for the people to be trained for endurance training. Let's see the vitamins and minerals content of the egg. Eggs are rich source of vitamins. Only exception is vitamin C. The egg is good source of vitamin B and significant source of vitamin B12 and riboflavin and also very valuable folate source. As far as other vitamins are concerned, it contains excellent amount of vitamin A, a good source of thiamine and riboflavin. It is a fair source of vitamin D. The mineral constituents iron, phosphorus and calcium are more abundant in yolk. Egg has phosphorus which is essential for bone health and gives some amount of zinc which is important for wound healing, growth and fight against the infections. Eggs also contain minute amount of iron, the vital component of red blood cells while the bioavailability of this iron is still being researched. Sulfur is more abundant in the white, chiefly as the constituent of the albumin. The yolk is the better source of vitamin than the white. Iodine content of an egg supports production of thyroid hormone and egg also contains selenium which is an antioxidant. Fat is almost 9%. The fat of an egg is present in the yolk and only less than 0.5% is in albumin. The composition of total fatty acid is polyunsaturated fatty acid which is 16%, monounsaturated fatty acid which is 38 percent and saturated fatty acid which is present only 28 percent. Eggs contain long chain omega-3 fatty acids mainly in the form of DHA. DHA contributes to normal brain function and normal vision. 
it is beneficial to consume 250 milligram of DHA and other fatty acids from various dietary sources. One medium egg contains 70 mg of omega-3 fatty acid and good amount of cholesterol. Now something interesting about the egg called as designer egg. These are the eggs where the feed of the bird is modulated basically to lower the cholesterol like addition of flaxseed in the feed to enhance omega-3 fatty acid content. Another term is egg substitutes. Concern over the cholesterol content in egg yolk has initiated the development of various commercial products known as egg substitutes. The basic goal for this formulation is to simulate whole egg without any cholesterol. So, this product is based on the use of egg white. They are not identical to whole egg in their potential uses. Now we come to the last part of the module which is about grading and quality assessment of the egg. The US Department of Agriculture has formulated definite guidelines to grade the eggs. Criteria for determination of quality of eggs are the interior quality of eggs and the appearance and the condition of the egg shell. Eggs of various quality and grade may differ in weight, size. For the retail market, evaluation must be done in the shell because eggs are supposed to be marketed intact. According to USDA, there are three grades. The first grade is called as grade AA, seen in the picture. Eggs under this category have whites that are thick and firm, yolk which is protruding tall and round and free from any defects. It is best used for frying and poaching because here appearance is very important. Then the second grade is A. This type of eggs have all the characteristics similar to grade AA. Only whites are reasonably firm. This quality of egg are usually sold in retail stores. The third grade is called grade B. Here the whites are thinner and yolks are flatter than eggs of a good quality. The shells must be with visible defects. These are usually used to produce liquid, frozen and dried egg products. Now to assess the quality of eggs, it is evaluated inside as well as outside the shell. When eggs are broken from the shell, their physical characteristics can be measured. The measurements may be of either the yolk or the albumin. The albumin index is determined by the height of the thick albumin in relation to its mean width. A special micrometer can be used to determine the quality of albumin in Hawk units. These units used to express the height of the thick albumin in relation to egg white. Another way of evaluation is to find out yolk index by determining the height of the yolk and calculating the ratio of this height to the width. Next method to assess the quality is Candling. Candling is one of the method used for testing eggs for quality internally as well as externally 
without breaking them. It consists of inspecting an egg with a beam of light that makes the interior quality visible. A very simple form of candling is placing a source of light in a dark room and positioning an egg in front of the flame. You can look into the interior quality. Candling is done in a dark room with the egg held before a light. The light penetrates the egg and it becomes possible to observe the inside of the egg. A simple candling device can be seen in the picture. In this method, the egg is held in a slanting position with the bigger that is oval end close to the hole in the candler or in front of the light source. It should be held between the thumb and the tips of first two fingers. Candling method detects bloody whites, blood spots or germ development. Although the white itself cannot be seen, its quality can be determined by observing how the yolk appears in an egg. The large amount of white in an egg of grade AA quality inhibits the movement of the yolk and keep the yolk centered so that it does not move near the shell. In an old egg, the air cell will be visible. The sorting of the eggs to be removed by candling are only those which contain bloody whites, blood spots and cracked shells. Another test to check quality is the water and the bowel test for freshness. Firstly, fill water in a deep bowl. The level of the water should be almost twice the height of the egg. Then, carefully lower the egg into the bowl. Here, three things that could happen. The first, a fresh egg will immediately immerse in the bottom and stay there. The reason is presence of very small air cell. Second, a slightly older egg of about one week still lie on the bottom of the bowl, but at a slight angle. It will bob up and down rather than lie still. Last, slowly as the days pass, the egg will start to lose its freshness and more air centers the egg, at which point it will begin to float and stand erect. The smaller end will lie on the bottom of the bowl. However, the egg will still be good enough to consume. Finally, if the egg floats without touching the bottom at all, it should be discarded as it will most likely to be deteriorated. As egg is categorized as a perishable food, storage is very important. Careful storage of egg is important in maintaining their quality. Improperly handled egg can be source of salmonella bacteria and causes severe food poisoning. Physical and chemical changes occur as an egg deteriorates. Physically, the egg whites become less viscous and more watery. The water from the white starts moving to the yolk, making it thinner. Shell is porous, so water will evaporate during the storage and carbon dioxide will escape. This phenomena causes increase in pH which results in the protein breakdown. Coating a layer of light mineral oil immediately after the egg is laid helps in preventing these changes. Otherwise, normal pH of 7.6 can increase over 9. Porous egg shell pick up flavor 
and odor very easily. But if they are stored covered, they are less exposed to undesirable flavor. Temperature is very important in egg storage. It will retain its quality best if the temperature remains during long term storage as minus 1 degree Celsius. According to the USDA, for preventing the growth of salmonella in the eggs, refrigeration is recommended. Refrigeration also keep intact texture and taste of the egg. Hens are vaccinated against salmonella in UK so that it can be safely used for 21 days. Following are the few recipes incorporating eggs. Finally, we will summarize what we have learned in this module. To summarize this module on egg, we can conclude that eggs are the exceptional food with high biological value protein which provides all essential amino acids required for optimal growth. Eggs are commonly known as good source of cholesterol and it also contains lecithin which are vital for the normal functioning of the cells and tissues in the body. Eggs are nutritious food which requires proper storage to retain their quality. Regular quality check and grading of the egg out of the shell and inside the shell is done to maintain the quality for the safe consumption. Hope the lecture has covered all the module objectives and the learning was interesting. Best luck.